You've spoken out against the funding of this project. Why is that? Well, my view is that NASA is doing and has done so many tremendous things over its history. We just talked about the jet engine being the biggest innovation of the last century. I would add to that the satellite. We, of course, also did Apollo. But this program is, I think, focusing too much of NASA's limited resources on a purpose that doesn't really provide that broader benefit. They're spending really, if it goes forward, $60 billion that would get you a vehicle uh, farther from Earth, granted, than we've gone since Apollo, but that was 50 years ago. Whereas we're doing this commercially now, and we're spending uh, $3 billion to get people to the space station using the private sector. So why would we be setting a technology uh, in place today, and in fact using engines that are already 40 years old, to go on a trip to Mars that is 20 years away and we don't have any of the resources to fulfill that uh, over that period of time. I just think it's a mismatch of resources with the really important overall work of NASA. So, you know, they say this is a step towards landing on Mars. How significant do you really think it is? Is that, a, is that an incorrect characterization? I think it is an incorrect characterization. I've heard they're saying it's the first step to Mars. I mean, we have rovers on Mars. We have a space station where we are learning how to live and work in space to get us farther. Um, this is a test of a of, of flight that will go for four <laughs> hours and go uh, no farther than certainly satellites we launch all the time on a commercial rocket. We've launched many times testing a heat shield, which is very likely not to be used in 20 years when we actually go to Mars. Uh, to think that technology of a heat shield wouldn't advance in 20 years um, is is not reality based. So I understand NASA likes to launch things. This is something that the contractors and the politicians who sold this mission to uh, the Congress have decided they would like to uh, proceed with. But it's not something that, in my view, is the best use of NASA resources. Laura, you make it sound like boys and their toys. I mean, what is it about launches that the private contractors like so much? These are contracts. These these are dollars. These are uh, this this rocket contract was a couple hundred million dollars, and these are taxpayer dollars. So yes, it is a bit like instead of focusing on the purpose, we focus on contracts. But that's a government program. Inertia is extremely um, strong, and the inertia of this program especially in started space. ten years ago <laughs> in space, especially, uh, it seems to be holding true on Earth as well. Well, so let me ask you, so the, the, uh, particularly here in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of talk about the, or the, the sort of the legend of, of the side benefits of the space program and the other inventions that happened concurrent with the space program that helped private industry so much. Uh, I've always found this to be a little bit specious because the same dollar amount might have been spent just on creating those things. But I wonder, is there a different in, in this kind of technology for this Orion program that you think won't benefit private industry and, and uh, innovation writ large? Of course, dollars spent at NASA benefit private sector and advance innovation. It's a question of balance and how much and where is the emphasis. So to me, a lot of this technology is older technology that we are piecing together to try to relive sort of the glory days of Apollo at a time that is quite different. And I agree with you, we should be investing in benefits primarily and things like the jet engine and the satellite weren't spin-offs, they were what we chose to invest in. So what are those things today that we can invest in? Optical communications and um, technologies that will help lower the costs and the operations costs of traveling to space so more people can experience it. Those are the kinds of things that will be, I think, more lasting that should be the focus of NASA today. At the same time, Laura, you have private companies in an aggressive race to space, Elon Musk and SpaceX, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin, Richard Branson and Virgin Galactic. Should NASA be in competition with these companies? Should NASA be partnering with these companies as they are in some cases? How does, you know, the country maintain its edge? This is a really important goal of the space program that I believe we are working to focus more on, and we are partnering with some of those companies, as you said. That's where the excitement is, in my view. 
you leverage the government's investment in technology, allowing the private sector to innovate. That's how we've advanced other industries. That's, of course, how the jet engine went and how the satellites have gone and launch vehicles as well. So human spaceflight is that next um, uh, aspect of space travel that the private sector wants to get in. There is no way NASA should try to compete with them, which is somewhat uh, difficult for them. If we had this much excitement and hype over those commercial launches to space station, the public would understand all the great things we're doing in space. It's nice to see NASA's uh, PR machine do so well and mm. talk about this as a flight that's uh, going to eventually go to Mars, but they do so many other things that we could be, I think, connecting with the public on uh, in more ways.